Uh, but that's still dropping, it's dropped again. Yeah. If you want to activate cooling, make sure you turn automatic cooling to yes. And we've whacked it right down to 6.7 degrees flow temperature, which you would never normally do because you don't want condents on the pipe work. Yep. That's what that radiator has been moving here from the... Oh, it's getting hot. I'm feeling nice and cool, thank you. Oh, hi guys, uh, you might recognise my voice. I don't think you've, uh, you've seen much of me before, but I'm producer Harrison, and I just wanted to make this really quick video to show what these so-called heating engineers are doing to cool their office in the extreme summer heat. Let's kind of have a, have a, have a quick look around the building. So the first marvellous invention that I need to show you is in the Heat Geek kitchen. This is south facing. And I believe the intention here is to block the sunlight from coming in and, and heating the kitchen with the windows open and the door slightly open as well. Let's go and have a look upstairs. Now I may have to speak loudly for this bit because the noise is fairly loud and it would seem that the guys, although know how to heat the property extremely well, are using this air conditioning unit to cool the property with a, a lovely freshly styled hose and a piece of cardboard covering up the window. That aircon unit is blowing towards me, sending this nice cool air over to this fan. And then from this fan, it's blowing it into this office and it's cooling Gemma nicely. Gemma, are you feeling warm? Are you feeling cool? I'm feeling nice and cool, thank you. <laughs> See? Well, that obviously works. The final thing to show you, and this one, to be fair, I know I've been taking the mickey for most of this video, this one is actually kind of interesting. So follow me, come into the, uh, the showroom where we do all of our filming, and you might see a familiar face. Uh, here is Adam fiddling with the controls of the heat pump. Neil is. Uh, Neil is. So uh, what is it you're doing, Adam? Uh, actually, this is uh, the controls for our air source heat pump, which we've, well, Neil has just installed the cooling chip for. For some reason, um, although the air source heat pumps have the ability to cool, you need a tiny, tiny, teeny weeny little 250, 350 pound chip to make it cool. So we just installed that. We're playing around with it to test it in order to teach you guys and uh, customers how to cool. That's why you've got, you've, I guess you've seen the cardboard curtains and... Uh, well, we've seen it, yeah. It's temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This can cool down to a certain point. It, basically, there's a potential issue for condensation to appear, and it can cause problems uh, in properties. So we're just experimenting with it now. Actually, we've also got cooling in here with that unit up there. That's an air-to-air -air heat pump, so this showroom is um, currently cooled anyway by that air-to-air. -air. Um, then the rads will become cool and cool uh, the property, and we've got the little aircon unit up there as well, just as a little extra boost because it's bloody hot. Oh, that's still on the Is it saying it's trying to cool? I'm just trying to see if it's on a... Have you set the minimum flow temperature? Yeah, it's 16. It was I think we can go below that. I'd rather almost <coughs> set a lower flow, and I want to see the condensation. Yeah, target flow temperature 16 degrees, so it's thinking about it at the moment. Oh, I wonder if the four-way valve is moving over. Oh, well, hold on, the full wave out movie and it takes seconds. Yeah. I mean, this is why we're doing it at the end of the day, isn't it? To find out what, so we know what to expect when... Yeah. I know on other heat pumps I've installed, if you had them um, as bivalent systems with a boiler, you could only run the boiler up to a certain temperature because if you tried to switch from the boiler to the heat pump and the return temperature was too high, mm. it just would never come on. All right, I'll well, hang on and see what happens. That should, in theory, now switch to cooling. Cooling technology. Oh, 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 oh. Plus or minus. Active cooling. Yeah. There's always one little change accepted. Can't tell, but I think the fan may have just moved. Come on. So I want this air to be hot because we're removing heat from the building. At the moment, it's cold. I don't know why I'm feeling it with my. The fan always starts up first and then the compressor, so you might have to wait. Compressor. Fans ramps up. Thumbs up from inside and some smiley faces. Oh, it's getting hot. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, blowing out all the air. See the temperature dropping. What the flow temperature? Great. I'm going to go and feel the radiators. You may notice this radiator. It's starting to get a bit cooler in the room. It might be an imperceptible amount, by the way. <laughs> yep. That's what that radiator's removing heat from the room. I mean, really, you'd want this with con uh, convector radiators with the built-in fans to help the heat exchange, but... 
proves the point and proves the methodology. Now, just to get this like really like running and just suck a load of heat out of the building, do you want to like set the minimum flow temperature to seven? Like condense is an issue ongoing long term. Let's see it condense. And then it can, it can drip underneath the floor or whatever for a tiny, tiny bit just so we can experiment with it. It's, I think the, the limit is for when you've permanently got a house that way. Yeah. Amazing. We're going to be the envy of the town. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I said! Great. And I don't have to get another 400 quid air conditioner for stuff. And a noisy air conditioner for the staff. So, oh, 24.6, but we've got no window open, we've got, uh, so hot air's coming in, we've got the blinds closed, we've got this door isolated as well, so we're not getting any of the, the vacuum yep. air coming from the... And do you know what flow, flow temperature is about 6.7 or something, was it? Uh, it's about 7 degrees coming out of the heat pump. Up here, we're starting to condense a bit up here. We've got aircon in the main building, as you've seen, a bit of a rusty old uh, bit of cardboard with a, an aircon on top. We had this door shut because no one in here was just cooling down the other rooms. We finally got the uh, heat pump active cooling working and we've whacked it right down to 6.7 degrees flow temperature, which you would never normally do because you don't want condensate on the pipe work in the floors, which here aren't insulated and vapor barrier. It should be vapor barriered if you're going to um, uh, do cooling. <coughs> so we've whacked it right down. I don't care about some uh, condensate on one day. It's an ongoing thing, the, the flow temperature. Uh, so we've got the low flow temperature. They're just starting to get a bit of condensate now, but it, it actually seems... very more, you just very It, it little kind of seems like you get the condensate appearing on the surface, and then more condensate appears, but it's not enough to gather up into a drip. And then, uh, so our, our, our test is, or the experiment is, we're shutting the door, we're at 24.7 now. It's about 28 degrees outside. 28, it's, the next room is about 22, 23. We're gonna leave this quite large radiator uh, and it's covered a bit so it's not best performance uh, we're going to see how much we can kind of reduce this room temperature with one radiator basically seven degree flow and uh, what returns probably it's probably about three degrees or something because yeah, yeah. there's not a big system and uh, we'll come back in what's time now uh, it's 24.8 and the time is 10 to 3. 10 to 3 we'll come back in what two, two hours whenever we kind of finish up and uh, see what the results are. If you want to activate cooling, make sure you turn automatic cooling to yes. Um, that's in system config in installer level. We've just found some uh, the settings for the cooling. Uh, these are quite important, so um, let's have a quick look at them. Installer install level, system config. Just scroll quite a long way down so you get heating, heating one. Yeah. We've only got one zone here, so that's heating one zone. Cooling possible, yes. That obviously has to be turned on. Dew point monitoring, you want yes. So that's going to track where the dew point is relative to humidity and uh, temperature. Uh, obviously, if it's monitoring the dew point, then you can keep above it and, you know, stop um, drips forming on the pipework. Uh, minimum target flow temperature. To, as a backup, you could set that from 7 up to 12 or something like that, just to make sure that you don't hit that dew point. And Tur outside temperature cooling. Yeah, so turn off. The cooling's going to stop when it's 17 degrees or below outside. Well, we've set that at 17. That's obviously adjustable. Importantly, offset dew point. So if the dew point's at 9, this will run the flow temperature 2 degrees higher. Uh, to prevent any um, any condensation uh, forming. This is the one that we kind of want to activate. Hopefully this will run two degrees higher and uh, it will maximize the cooling effect on a continual basis. Let's find out. Just for uh, liability, um, I'm not 100% sure this does track and sit above the dew point because we can't make we can't see that happening in real life yet. It's still targeting seven degrees and we've seen that this thinks the dew point is nine which uh, sounds absolutely spot on. Obviously play around yourself, don't take everything we've said here and just assume that's the way of doing things. Two hours later. Let's do it. Uh, you've already been in here. I've been in here. I can feel why you've moved that thermostat down there. I've moved that down and I can, I can feel it. Three, three minutes ago, less than three minutes ago, I moved that and that has dropped 0.8 of a degrees. Okay, I can already feel Harrison, uh, a layer here, actually I've got a slightly wet hand here, 
I can feel a stratification layer. This is cold, or cooler, than the rest of the room. Yeah, totally. So this is dragging coolness down and just kind of stopping there. So... It will eventually work its way through. It will eventually work its way through. It'll take a long time. Well, it will kind of get up to here, yeah, but then, well, then it would circulate around that part. So actually you'd have to put the radiator up high. Which is why they prefer for the or which won't for fackles. I mean, you wouldn't put the radio up, I'm saying, because it would be, because it's working the other way around, you'd spin it that way around and put it up. This is the same thing, actually, so you can't steal this radiator. These are bottom feed uh, um, radiators because the heat comes in, goes up and along, and it heats from the top downwards. Because this is cool, it's just staying and going along the bottom, so you've not got the full output of the radiator. You'd actually want to ideally pipe the flow at the bottom and the, and the heat out, the, the cold out the top, or the hot out the top. The problem is, it would have to flow the other way around when it's heating. So, a few things we've learned here. Um, uh, actually, yeah, the cold is definitely hotter, colder than the top. Um, it's very unusual to touch a radiator and feel it cold. Um, that, that's okay. So that is over one degree that that has different dropped in, in, in a two foot high from here, here to here. From desk height to floor. So, uh, so I'm incredible. So this is why, so we've got the flow issue. We've got, we've got, we, if you somehow need to, you need to fan it. You need to fan it to go the other way or push down to get some circulation going. If you left the radiator there though, and you fan downwards, I think the ground would go cold, we got to there, and then it would just circulate here, and you'd have uh, this sort of stratification. You've got to put the fans on the bottom and blow but it up. up. Exactly, to, to de-stratify the room to Correct. make it work best. Which is exactly how, if you look at the Jaeger yeah, and the mice and the I like, exactly how they work. So th these can work, uh, but you've really got to think about this stuff, or you get a fan in the room just to stir the air around the room, face it at the floor, or point it up, or something like that. And so, this hasn't been, I, I, you can feel it, my hand feels cool. Well, like, I, I, so you're on the it, yeah. This temperature here is well, beautiful. I've just washed my hands and I can feel cold air on, oh, okay. on my hands here. That's 1.2 degrees. Uh, but that's still yeah. dropping, it's dropped again. Yeah. Point. So, um, uh, uh, very interesting, there's loads to learn there. Uh, maybe we'll do a little write-up on this just to sort of show our findings. Um, because you normally wouldn't, you wouldn't cool with radiators typically. It's not a known thing. We're, you know, we're expend this whole building is one of the experiment. So uh, uh, perhaps we'll do a little write up um, after we've got collected some more data. Uh -oh. Should we go and see how the guys are uh, I would, I, I think we should, um, I know where to source them as well. Some fans for this, some plug-in fans. Yeah, you can just get the little, yeah, you know, even battery ones or something to stick on top. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is, although we've put this nice low temperature, um, because we're experimenting, it's just occurred to me these are steel radiators. One that will crack in the paintwork, uh, in the paint paintwork, and these will rust like that. So you really do want to keep well above due, uh, unless you want to replace your radiators um, more often than you need to. Twenty-four point three. Uh, it's still on the way down. This is this is going to that's going to drop to about twenty-one, I think, um, at, at the rate it's going. So uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Cool, let's go see how the other office guys have got on. How are you? Are you nice and cool? Yes, freezing. You're freezing? My feet are freezing. Your feet freezing. My feet freezing. So exactly <laughs> what we've just found, she's, it, yeah, everyone else has already noticed. We've been downstairs recording. They've already found out that it's, the, the, the coldness is just staying down by their feet, basically. So is that why you put this fan facing on here? We'll put that on there. To stir up the air. Ah, so these guys have got the fan pointed at the radiator as well. What you've noticed? Just, just your feet get freezing cold because all the cold just drops to floor level and comes across. So your feet are, oh, might don't, but mm. apparently you can get the clip on fans for these radiators. I'll go on top. If we, we clip them on the bottom, we should blew them upwards. We could blow the cooler air up or whichever we're, way around. We're all drawing the same conclusions here, so this is obviously very good. Literally, yeah. the PC fans. Oh, yeah. Speed comfort radiator vans. Okay, let's get some. So you can collect these after you've done your cooling for the two weeks during the summer or three weeks, and then chuck them in the loft or box them up or whatever, or you leave them on and turn your weather compensation down, get an even higher score. Oh no! Or if you've got an undersized, one undersized radiator, you leave that one on. Right. And that brings your overall scot down because you had to run extra high temperature for that one radiator that didn't have the output. Yeah. Right. More to follow on this experiment. For more sort of technical information on how to cool with heat pumps and stuff, uh, I've just done a video with Richard. Where's Richard gone? Yeah. 
Oh, he's back there. Uh, um, it's me just kind of having a chat with Richard about how to, to call the heat pumps. Uh, look out for it. It's going to be called something like How to Call the Heat Pumps. Uh, and I'll see you then.